Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you this morning? Or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, how are you this evening? If you're here live, remember to say good day. And if you're here for the replay, do a hashtag replay. And for those who haven't done this yet, feel free to follow my page or subscribe so that you know when I'm live or when the latest video comes out. And uh, I'm actually a trauma recovery consultant, coach. I help you go from recovery to remission. And each day I love to come and share information with you. And today's a really special day because if you haven't grabbed your note paper yet, grab your note paper. And we're going to go through some bound essential boundaries which apply as we deal with narcissists, as we become aware of areas where we're codependent. And the most valuable gift I can give you is questions that you can ask for reflection and questions that you can take to your therapist or your trauma coach. And what you can do is ask them to help you build a deeper awareness around whatever one that you choose and also to build a strategy to help you move forward. So when we're in recovery, our goal is to keep moving towards being able to be in remission. So without further ado, and always feel welcome to ask questions. Now, I just want to put that up for you, today's infographic. And let's look at the first one. The first one is taking and, sorry, taking, <laughs> talking at an intimate level on the first meeting. Now, the question we need to be asking or the, and the different facets we need to look at is if we meet somebody, and this is whether it's a relationship or prospective relationship or prospective friendship, and they begin to talk at an intimate level, first meeting, or even the second or third, there's a couple of dynamics that we want to be able to wrap our mind around. The first one is the intimate level of life is supposed to be the deepest, most sacred part of ourselves. So, good morning, Laurel. So we don't want to uh, give people access to that straight away. There's a whole bunch of things that we need to know. And especially, especially if we don't know yet whether we're dealing with a covert narcissist. All right. So the, a covert narcissist uh, often has many positive attributes. Uh, despite their lack of empathy uh, and how they abuse, exploit, manipulate, etc., they are frequently intelligent passionate, charming, sociable, funny, likeable, popular, talented, but they will treat you horribly in private. No one knows, everyone else thinks they're awesome. And okay, let's all stick our hands up, who's been down this road. <laughs> and uh, I can laugh now because I'm out of it, but it's not funny when you're going through it at all. Because you have to uh, rebuild your entire life because you literally lose everyone and everything when dealing with covert narcissists, okay? So, the question that we need to examine and build strategies around is, am I able to meet someone and stand by my values? So my values reflect that I will not talk intimately or about my intimate life uh, and have different debts about how much you will talk about on the first meeting with someone. Then trust needs to be earned, not given, all right, on both sides of the coin. And we want to stop going down roads where we formed codependence again. So remember, we want to go from recovery to remission. So we need to take this on board, sit down, do some journaling around it, and begin to build an awareness around 
perhaps in other relationships where you've given away too much too soon, simply because we've got a good heart and we trust, well, I know for me, I trust too easily, too quickly, and I've really had to dial that back. And I'm still learning it, by the way. I'm still learning how to dial it back. Falling in love with a new acquaintance. Just don't do it, okay? But we're adults, so I can't tell you what to do. So what do we need to look at around a new acquaintance? We need to be able to say, am I able to maintain who I am and not go gushing about them? And look, one of the key things that we need to examine within ourselves, especially if we haven't had relationships or friendships for some time, because of how much complex PTSD takes away from us, then we need to fill our own love bank first so that we don't look to others to fill it. So what we, the question we need to ask, and we can only do this through experience, is say, is my love bank full enough that I'm not going to fall in love with somebody at the drop of a hat? Now... I want to give you a really, really hot tip here. When we've come through complex PTSD, we often have automatic reactions that we are completely unaware of until we fill our own love bank. So, for example, I can walk into gym and I'm there and I'm focused and I walk in and there's a guy there and all of a sudden I thought, it sounds funny, I know, I really understand that I know it just sounds funny. My thoughts are, hmm assessment of what he's like, hmm, would he be a possible partner? Now, I caught this happening the other day, because normally I'm walking to the gym at 5 o'clock and I'm like, seriously, that's the last thing on my mind. And I went, oh my goodness, I wasn't even focused on that. And next thing you know, my mind's got this thought happening. And I went, this is why we need to learn how to discipline ourselves and say, yeah, no, that's not where the focus of my life is. So the big question then becomes for us, where is the focus of my life? Is the focus of my life centered on why I'm here and what I'm here to do and my bigger picture? Because when it is, we can dismiss thoughts like that and we go, yeah, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Actually, here's a good analogy. It's like going down the rabbit hole of Facebook. If I bought into that thought, I'd go down the rabbit hole of relationships when I I know in my heart I'm not ready. So we've got to be prepared to catch automatic thoughts that no longer serve the plan and purpose of our life, where we're headed, you know, what we want out of our lives. Okay, essential boundary being overwhelmed by a person. If you come away from meeting someone and you're overwhelmed, I want you to sit down and reflect on the conversation you had and ask, was there any part of that conversation where they cared about me or was the majority of the conversation them caring about them and their voice? All right? And if it was, you know, them caring about them and their voice, then run. Just don't go back. I'll make it easy for you. (laughs) These are the subtle things that we never learned that are vital for us to have relationship. Okay? The other side of the overwhelm, actually, I'll go into that in another video this week. I'm going to talk to you about the overwhelm. And But if they're a genuine, heartfelt person with their heart dialed into the right place, you're not going to feel overwhelmed because they're going to share space with you, okay? Next boundary, going against your personal values to please other people. After you've met someone the first time, this one's really easy. Sit down and reflect. Were there areas where I agreed with the conversation and it goes against my personal values? Again, this is like that automatic thought that comes out. We can do it automatically and not we're not allowed to beat ourselves up at all, okay? It's like, oh, I can see where I've done that. And if that person's a healthy person, 
we can go back and say, look, I'm really sorry. I, I'm learning how to stick with my values, okay? We are allowed to be learning. We've never learnt this stuff. So we're allowed to be learning and we do it all together. You know, we're not on our own. There's a whole raft around of us around the world that we've got to learn how to do this. Okay. Now, if you don't feel you can be authentic with that person, then just keep focused on where you're going in your life. Okay. But ask the question, ask the question as a personal reflection. Next boundary, ignoring when others have inappropriate boundaries I can't tell you how many times I've done this but the question is when I come away from that initial conversation am I minimizing that person's inappropriateness in order to fit in okay so here's the question again am I minimizing shrinking down that person's inappropriateness in order to fit in. Now, this is where standing on your values comes in and just go, well, you know, thanks for the conversation, but I'm not going back there. I'm not going to revisit it because that's just crazy. Uh, look at it as a red flag. Can't do that. Um, when, we're, when we're going from recovery to remission, we've got to be aware that our heart can be sensitive. So we want to honour that sensitiveness and we want to build a strong sensitivity by honouring the answer to that question. Okay, next one. Touching without being asked for permission. Can I just tell you that, can I just share with you something that's really super important? We were raised in generations where this just never happened. Now, when I was thinking of an analogy for this for us, there's a show that I watch, and look, honestly, you'd have to really, yeah, just don't go there if, if dark humor's not your thing. Uh, the Santa Clarita diet, just it, but we love the humor, it's just wacky. But in the show, there's a teenage couple, and the boy is always making sure that how the girl feels and where she's at. And he loves her, but he waits. And any male or female that comes into your life, if they have this deep abiding respect for you, they will wait. They really will wait. And they will check whether they can touch you or not, whether you feel comfortable. And because we've never had that happen in our lives, it's something that we want to build into our lives. And if somebody touches us, actually, I just had this kind of flashback that made me realise that somebody actually really crossed a boundary and I didn't realise it at the time. So if somebody crosses your boundary, take it as a red flag and just don't go back. And like I say to my clients, there's billions and billions of men in the world, I'm sure. And we just keep moving right along because the more that we build into us healthy boundaries, the less likely people are that, that we will come across people who are going to cross them, okay? So touching without being asked for permission is absolutely, it should be number one on the list and we are allowed to say, I don't want to be touched. Okay, I don't feel comfortable and I don't want to be touched. And it's got nothing to do with, oh, can you, can you remember in the old days, like, you know, high school days to me, old days, when, you know, if you didn't let a boy kiss you or something, you were called frigid. Oh, my goodness, talk about memories from years ago. It's not that. This is called having a healthy boundary and knowing that I am so valuable that I'm not going to let somebody cross that boundary because... They're showing me a complete lack of respect. Now, why? So the question then becomes, why would I want somebody in my life who has a complete lack, who is showing me a complete lack of respect? What strategies do I need to develop in order that I'm able to use my voice 
and speak up. Okay? Next boundary. Accepting gifts, touch or sex that you don't want. If you have been sexually abused, and I say this as somebody who has been down this road and experienced this, before you go out dating, especially dating, I'm not going to, friendships aren't as applicable in this, but before you go out dating, I want you to get informed on social cues, informed on uh, the language, informed about, for me, okay, so for me, I had to go and literally sit with a friend who's a qualified counsellor and say, look, all my boundaries got violated. I need you to tell me the language behind what this person was saying because I totally missed, obviously, things that I should have known and I did not know. I'm an adult. So we can feel like, oh my goodness, how did I not know this? Or we can go, I didn't know this, I need help because I never want this situation to happen again. Now, where we come unstuck is that because we learn to be very truthful, very upfront with what I need and what I don't need, we make an assumption that when I tell somebody something, they believe me and they will respect me. Um, No, it doesn't actually work like that in the real world. People have their own agendas And we have to take our time in relationships, be they friendships or relationships, to see if there is mutual respect. Okay? But if you have been sexually abused, please, please, please sit with somebody who can explain to you what is the language behind, like for me, what a man is saying when he says certain things when you first start dating, because I had no clue. None, zero, all right, and I got, ended up in a really bad situation which I had no control over. And when we're sexually abused, and when we end up in a situation where we have no control, we end up freezing. Or well, for me, I froze my personality type, trauma type is to freeze, so I couldn't actually leave that situation until it progressed to its natural end, all right. So the question then becomes, have I or am I able to say no? Okay, am I able to say no, thank you, be firm and still go, okay, this is what I need, all right? I need to stand firm. Now I know I can, but I I would never repeat what happened. Okay, last boundary, letting others direct your life and believing it's okay. I have done this in the past and not even known it, okay? And I do it because I go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see your point. And so I go off down a rabbit hole of pursuing what other people can see and forget that I actually do know what I need and what I want. So the question for this one then for self-reflection then becomes, is there an area of my life where I'm letting others direct my path? Do use that question as a healthy way to examine where I'm avoiding what I want out of my life or where I need to pursue different areas of my life which are different to what other people perceive. Okay, and that's okay. All right, I want to give you a really, really interesting tip, which I learnt, I discovered this morning at gym. Our bodies, our brain has trained our bodies so uh, consistently that we hold on to things. Even if we're not triggered, our brain, our body is still holding on to things. And when I was at gym this morning, I realized that I have to be willing, I have to engage my own willingness to let have my body let go of stuff, all right? 
And as I sat on the bike, and I just in my mind repeated, I'm willing for my body to let go, right? Now, I don't even know what I'm letting go of, but I know that my body keeps holding on to repetitive patterns. Uh, Repetitive trigger sensations. And I just went, I'm willing for my body to let go of. I'm just willing for my body to let go. And as I did this, I found that my body was able to start relaxing and letting more oxygen in. So I hope that helps somewhere in your day today that you're going to allow your body to be willing to let go. We don't have to know of what. We just need to know that our body's been trained to hold on for years and we just want to be willing to let go. Okay, thanks for joining in. It's been wonderful to have you here. Uh, If I can help, let me know, and uh, I will catch you again tomorrow morning. Same bat time, same bat channel. And thank you. Bye for now.